Hi, this is Stephen Brower from Rat Valley Community College, and this is for CSIT 256, Architecture and Assembly Language. This is part two of the um, installing of the Irvine Library. Um, part one showed going to Canvas, downloading the zip, um, extracting the zip, copying the Irvine folder there, and bringing it to the root of the C drive, um, and then the making a copy of the project template into the Lab01 Hello folder. So um, part one of the video went through that, and this will just pick up now with part two, where I'm going to do the equivalent of uh, Hello World. Um, and if you remember from um, uh, the past, when you guys did Hello World in Java, um, the very first time you did it, not necessarily every line was explained, but in the second chapter, um, that's when the lines were um, explained as to what was uh, has been going on. So I'm going to make only a few comments on a couple of things. Um, one is that the semicolons in assembly are for comments. So any place you see a semicolon, those lines are comments. The template, so when we copy from the project template, the main ASM that we get, there's like a template and it's a fill in the blank. It's like for those that used NetBeans, when you would create a new um, project, you would get a class file that had a main method in it. You can think of this part here as being the main um, method. Um, for the string that we're going to display, I'm going to declare the variable as message to display, which will be of type byte. Um, by the way, assembly um, is not case sensitive, um, but we'll get into programming guidelines uh, later. Uh, and by not being case sensitive, is that byte that I just typed could have been all lowercase. It could have had the first letter capitalized, um, it, um, or it could be all caps like I have it here, um, that it will still compile and run as long as it's spelt uh, correctly and not B-I-T-E. So here within double quotes, we put the string that we want to display. So I'll do hello world, exclamation point. Um, if you remember in Java, there was a system.out.print. And what this write string is, is like, and I'm going to add here as a comment, whoops. I'm going to add here as a comment, like system.out dot print okay but in order for write string to work it needs to know what to print and um, so uh, what the author has set up as his quote-unquote parameter is a register and we'll talk more about the registers in uh, chapter 2 edx is one of the general purpose registers um, offset is um, it's, it's technically it's a byte displacement from the beginning of the data segment to where the variable is declared. And I'm going to be lazy just to make sure I get it right, the message to display. Okay. And so I'm going to say load edx with, and I'll put here as address. So it's like an address, uh, address of string to display. Okay. Um, now, if you remember from Java, print the cursor would remain on the line and if you wanted to advance to the next line you would need to do a print ln or you could use um, a backslash n in order for displaying um, i'm going to remove this line here in terms of the dump okay so um, i have the description i have my name i have the date um, I have, this is the string I just declared. It's null terminated, which we'll talk more about later. Um, these three lines here would be the same as system.out.print line, parentheses, um, and then the, the string that was being dis displayed. Um, um, exit, if we do not have exit at the bottom of this procedure, the program will actually keep running, getting the next instruction, the next instruction, the next instruction. Um, and um, an exit process is 
um, well, shut up and, and let's move on. Okay, so um, I'm ready to co compile, and one thing I do want to warn, I don't know if this is going to happen or not, in a sense I always kind of hope it does happen, um, but sometimes because we're creating an executable file, your antivirus software may step in and say it's a virus. And so then you have to go and tell the antivirus software, no, 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 it's not a virus. Part of the reason why it says it's a virus, uh, people use this to write viruses. Um, and uh, viruses are identified by signatures. And so that means that the signature, which is the Irvine library, uh, is one that antivirus software will recognize. So um, I typed the code. And, and by the way, some visual items here. You see that little star? That star there means that it's not yet saved. When we actually go and do the build, it will automatically save for us. So off the menu, if I say build, rebuild solution. Now, if there are any error messages, they will pop up here. It does say once succeeded. Part of the reason why I'm hesitating for a second is I want to see if the uh, um, antivirus software kicks in. Uh, the antivirus software hasn't kicked in. Um, so then I'll do debug, start without debugging. And uh, there, there you go, threats found. Okay. Uh, um, so it actually let, which is actually in a sense kind of bad about the antivirus software, it actually let me run it. And then it comes back and goes, oh, I think that's a virus. Um, that wasn't good. But what happens if I try to go and run it again now, it's going to say that uh, unable to start program. So let me go and resolve this threat. And um, two different ways of, of resolving the threat. One is I could allow just the threat itself. The other thing is I can configure it and um, say to allow the folder. Um, but for this one right here, if I, so this is the one that it had just removed, 6.3. Um, and so if I say restore, yeah, it should bring it back. And so if it brings it back, I should be able to start without debugging, and it should let it go through. The other thing that could be done is you have to add an exclusion saying to not um, um, scan the folder where we're actually going to be creating the executable files. And just as a reminder is that in Lab 1 Hello, this is the folder I'm working in, so 12.04 p.m., this main ASM, this is the one I'm working on. If I go into this debug folder, here's this project EXE. That's the thing that it had scanned and it said that um, it was bad. And by the way, let me, for giggles and grins, let me drop to the command prompt in this folder. Okay, so I'm in this folder. If I do a dir, we see here's um, project.exe. And so if I type project, then there's the running of the program, um, Hello World. So this executable um, is what Visual Studio had created when I went and I said um, build, rebuild, solution. Uh, we'll get into in a later chapter, which is chapter two or three, no, I think chapter two, oh, which is this week. <laughs> in a later video, uh, we'll get into um, sort of the, the details of what happens behind the scenes. Um, but what I, I will point out is that, so the main ASM, that is our um, source code. If I come into the debug folder here, the main OBJ, that is a compiled version of our code, but it's not runnable. Um, and then the project EXE, there is a linker that took place that took the library that the author has and our code linked them together to produce the um, executable. Um, anyway, so if I, I do want to go and make changes, let's say I change it to hello world, how are you doing? Now there are keyboard strokes for this, but I'm, I'm just going to go off the menu. So if I can do, oh, sorry. Um, rebuild solution. It'll recreate the executable. And then if I do debug, start without debugging, hello world, um, how are you doing? Um, and one thing I do want to point out right here, this part, exit code zero, exit code zero is good. If you see anything other than zero, 
then um, something went awry. Okay, so um, that concludes the um, well, the part two of this video. So, um, yeah, what got blended together was the installing, configuring of the library, and then Lab One Hello World. Um, the point is, if I actually go and set up a computer, I actually will do the Hello World program to make sure it's working. Um, so by us going through and getting this program, this Hello World running, it's a way of testing to see that the Irvine library um, is configured and is good to go. Um, and as you saw, we had that issue with the um, uh, antivirus software kicking in. Um, and, and of course, if you have different antivirus software, the way you go about allowing it uh, will be a little bit different. Um, okay, so um, uh, real quickly to recap um, <laughs> is the I downloaded the zip file that had the Irvine uh, library in it. I um, extracted or I, I copied the Irvine folder out of there and copied it to the root of the hard drive. I um, made a copy of the contents of the Project 32, which is our template, into the Lab 1 Hello World. And then I opened the solution in Lab 1 Hello World, and then I made the changes, and I was able to then build and then run it.